If I asked you out of all the editing styles in 2024, which one grabbed your attention the most? If I were to answer this, I think I would have to say this one. I guess. Houston Cold combined 3D camera movement with high quality motion graphics and advanced scene setup to create the ultimate short form editing style in my opinion at least. He brought a whole new understanding to what a short form video could be. And this arose a big question in the editing industry. How do you even create such high quality 3D animations? Which is exactly why in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how you can create this 3D editing style. To do this, we're going to be recreating this Houston Cold edit completely from scratch. I will be taking you by the hand step by step and creating these three high quality 3D animations inside of After Effects. We're going to be going through scene setup, clean motion graphics, 3D animation principles, and even 3D camera movement. We've got a lot to go through, obviously, but first you need to understand that this is a very complex editing style. So it's best if you follow along. That's why I've left all the assets and project files used to create this edit down below in the description and you can download them for free. Also, free education can only get you so far. If you really want to master this 3D editing style, you'll benefit from our 3D editing masterclass at Ultimate Editors, but more on that later on in the video. But with this out of the way, let's go ahead and get straight into our project. The first thing we're gonna need to do is set up our project so that we can start animating. So I'll bring in my short into Premiere Pro, cut it up while keeping some breathing room in between the cuts and add in my J cuts. Then we're also gonna need to subtitle this. So I head over to my text tab, click on transcribe, then click on create captions and set these settings to the lowest so that we only get one word captions. Then we convert them into graphic layers by going up here and clicking on upgrade caption to graphic. And with this done, we have a fully cut up and subtitled video. And it's now time to bring this project into After Effects. To do this, we'll select all of our layers, right click and click on replace with After Effects composition and hope the PC doesn't Before we get into After Effects, there are a few plugins that will make this whole animating process so much easier. So I thought I'd tell you guys about them. First off, we're gonna be needing the Flow plugin, which will allow us to apply smoother keyframes with just one click. Then we're also gonna be needing the Easy Tools plugin, which will allow us to center objects with just one click. We're also gonna need a plugin called Unprecompose, and you'll see why in just a bit. And we will also need a plugin called Animation Composer, which will take care of the text animations for us. And we'll obviously need Deep Glow to achieve those really high quality glows. And with After Effects finally set up, we can get started on our animations. Now that we're inside of After Effects, the first thing that you'll notice is that all of our text is pre-composed. So we're going to select all of this and click on layer and click on unpre-compose. Now let's shift our focus to this first section here. This is what it looks like. I've got a very simple question for you. Now the first thing I need to do is create a quick text style and animation to the subtitles. So I take the first subtitle, center the anchor point by clicking this and place it down here. Then I added in a gradient ramp, set the start to here and the end to here. And then I changed the start color to white and the end color to gray and finished it off with a nice deep glow with an exposure of 0.1. Now I applied the same effects to this second text as well and this is where I wanted to transition into our first complex animation. To do this I added in a white solid and I added the fractal noise effect on it then I keyframed the brightness at the beginning to minus 100 and at the end to 100 and finally I placed it under my main layer and parented the track mat of the main layer to this transition. Then I added a white solid in the background and the transition was complete. Now I took the word very and applied the same gradient tramp but I just changed the colors to darker ones. As for the word simple, I went over to animation composer and I added in a letter pop-up animation, then added a shape layer and using my rectangle mask I drew out a box covering the word. Then placed my anchor point on the left side of the box and unlinked the scale property. I then keyframed the horizontal scale, moved backward and changed it to zero, then I applied the flow graph to those keyframes and finally I changed the color to red and stylized it with a drop shadow and the rough and edges effect. And to finish things off I added in the deep glow to both the text and the red rectangle to get this look. Now yes it did take us quite a minute to get up to this point but now we have a text style, a red rectangle and a few animations that we can reuse and repurpose later on in the video. But now let's go ahead and continue the animation. So I selected everything and converted it to 3D layers and I created some distance in between the text and background. I'm using the basic 3D render because it will allow us to keep effects like glows. I took the word question and moved it off to the right side and added an animation for it as well. Then to stylize my scene a bit more I added this question mark with a gradient ramp from white to gray. Then I duplicated it three times to get this subtle background and with this done I added the shape layer, made the rectangle around the word question, then in the contents I removed the fill and added a subtle red stroke instead and finally topped it off with a light deep glow. Now it was time to animate the camera movement and this is where my PC starts crying. So I added a two node camera and a null object and added the transform effect to the null object then parented the camera to the null. I started off the camera closer to the text 
then had it zoom out slightly and made sure to smoothen out the keyframes using the flow plugin. Then I added another null object and linked the first one to the second one and I keyframed the current position and moved the camera over to the word question. Now for this last part I say for you so I added the word for and I moved it to the top of my scene, duplicated it and wrote out the word you and to stylize the scene a bit more I added these thin strokes of rectangles and lowered their opacity. And then I finally keyframed my camera and moved it up to the final scene at the end and don't forget to smoothen out the keyframes using the flow plugin. And with this finally done scene one was completely finished so we went ahead and pre-composed everything and added a few more effects like a vignette, a fisheye warp and some blur around the edges. And this is what we end up with for scene one. I've got a very simple question for you. Now this is the first part of our first animation and at the end of it is where we transition into our second animation to complete this animation. Yeah I said animation like five times but now we can move on to our second animation. Now going into this next scene I brought in an image of a guy in an alleyway and rotoscoped the character out of the scene. Then I copied the text style I made earlier on and added it to the word what and do. Then I placed the word you on top of the image and added a letter pop-up transition to it. Then we created the same red rectangle with the animation that we created earlier on but now to to move on to my next scene I wanted to create a transition where this red rectangle kind of takes over the rest of the scene and transitions into a red background. So I moved my scene to the left and I created another shape layer with the same properties as the rectangle and using my pen tool I drew out this rectangle shape and keyframed the path and then made it animate like this. Then I added another rectangle on the right side of the screen and also keyframed the mask path so that these two points animate across the screen like this. And this will create a smooth animation of the red color filling up the screen. Now let's go ahead and create the content for our second scene. I first created this rectangle here with rounded corners and made it white. I added the word want and changed the gradient to a bright red to dark red gradient. Then I did the same thing for the words to and do. Finally, I scaled the rectangle so that it fits the phrase nicely. And then I added a bit of rotation to it and then added another shape layer and drew out another rectangle. But this time I removed the fill and added a simple stroke to it. And then I duplicated it and made it bigger. And this just helps blend these shapes together. Now to transition to the last section of this animation, I had an amazing idea. I placed the anchor point at the bottom and animated the scale increasing vertically. Then I also keyframed the orientation and made it rotate back to an upright position. Then I applied our flow keyframe graph. Finally, I wrote out the word width and keyframed the position and placed the keyframe at the beginning. Then I moved the text to the top of the box and smoothed out those keyframes. Then I extended the text and have the word start behind the box. And after smoothing out the animation, this is what it looks like. That's a lot of animating, but we're not done. So then I made the box change colors as it changes shapes using my tint effect. And I also keyframed the source text for the word with and had it change to the word video editing and placed those keyframes right in between the animation so that it's not noticeable. Then I added a deep glow to the box and made the exposure 0.3 while enabling chromatic aberration. And I also pasted this deep glow on the other two rectangle shapes in the scene. And finally, I changed the tint color to a bright yellow. And with the scenes all set up, it was finally time to add in our camera with our null object. Now we started off our camera further away from the subject and made it zoom in on the text. Then we keyframed our position and moved it right across the red mask where our second scene was. And then we finally added a subtle zoom in to the word video editing at the end. Then as always, we pre-compose all the layers together and apply our vignette and warp effect and blur. And this is what our final animation looks like. I've got a very simple question for you. What do you want to do with video editing? Now this will do for our first animation. And if you feel like this took a long time, it's probably because we've had to recreate everything completely from scratch. But now that we understand how to actually create these and we have a few assets that we can reuse, the next two animations will not take this long. But real quick, before we get into our next animations, if you're a video editor watching this, I wanna ask you a question. How would you feel if you mastered Premiere Pro, After Effects, the viral short form editing styles of 2024 and the high paying long form editing styles of 2024 and made $1,000 in the next 60 days? You probably think I'm insane, but this is what 350 plus students are achieving inside of Ultimate Editors. And how exactly is that even possible? Well, first we get them to master Premiere Pro using our 50 course Premiere Pro Masterclass. And then we get them to master After Effects using our 50 course After Effects Masterclass. We then teach them the 2024 short form editing styles like Ali Abdal, Houston Cold, By Maximize, and Devon Jatho in over 100 in-depth courses. And then we also teach them the 2024 long form editing styles like Iman Gaji, Isaac, and my own editing style in 100 in-depth courses. This is over 300 courses of video editing knowledge that you can get access to. 
On top of that, we even include our 30-day landing client plan, which teaches you how to build a very high-quality personal brand, the secrets to landing clients, and how to close them using a special sales script and gets you to $1,000 in your first 30 days. If you want to take your editing to the next level and start making serious money with it online, I'll leave a link down below where I break down how you can use the Ultimate Editor's plan to achieve exactly that in the next 60 days. I mean, it's a completely free video and you won't lose anything if you watch it, so don't miss out on this big opportunity as a video editor. But with this now being said, let's go ahead and move on to our second animation. Let's now shift our focus over to this section here, which we're going to be animating. Now, the first thing I have is a big sequence of text. So I'll copy my text style, which we created in the beginning and just paste it over all of them. And there we go. That should do it for the text. Now I wanted to create a circle graph with a bunch of percentages. So I start by adding in a shape layer and drawing out a circle using my circle mask. I also added in a solid behind it as a background and using my gradient ramp effect, I changed the mode to a radial ramp and changed the start to gray and the end to black. You could probably tell, but gradient ramp is one of my favorite effects. Then I changed the circle's color to white and add the radial wipe effect, keyframe the transition completion at 100% and move the keyframe to the beginning. Then I changed the value to 90% and apply our flow graph. Then I added in text and wrote out 90% and changed the font to a thinner one and colored it red. Then I duplicated the circle animation three times, coloring one red, one blue and one yellow. And all I did was change their angles so that they start after each other. And then I added a deep glow on all of them. And to add some more detail, I added the gradient ramp and set the start here and the end here and made the start a bright red and the end a dark red and did the same thing for all three of them. Then I added these three circle outlines for more detail and it was then time to animate the camera. It's okay big guy, we can make it. So we added our two node camera and this time I set the point of interest to the center of the circle. Then I added the keyframe for the camera's current position and moved it forward and I moved the camera up and a bit further away. I then added another keyframe and had the camera move to the left and focus on the red area. And then I added another keyframe and had the camera move down to focus on the blue area. And lastly, one last keyframe and had the camera move to the right to focus on the yellow area. And this created a really smooth camera movement animation. Then as a final touch, I changed the color of the background gradient ramp to a red so that we get this cool look. And now it was on to the most complex animation of all of them. And this is where we start using 3D objects. So it's time to shift our focus to this area over here. And first up, I need to set up my 3D environment. So I added a solid white layer, made it 3D and turned it 90 degrees flat. Then I duplicated it and made the duplicate a flat wall in the background. Then I added a shape layer that pre-composed my sequence and turned it into advanced 3D because I want to start using geometric shapes. So I turn to the top view and using my shape layer, I create this circle. I then increase the extrusion and lift it up so that it appears above the ground. Then I change its color to white and I duplicate it, change its color and decrease its size and placed it on one of the edges. Then I increased the extrusion and made it taller and I duplicated it two more times and this is what our 3D scene should look like at the end. Now I went to gather some 3D assets and I downloaded a laptop, a camera and a small house. I then imported the laptop into After Effects and shrinked it until it was the composition size. I placed it on one of the circles and added a bit of rotation to it. And finally, I animated a small rotation so that it looks like it's floating. Then I added my camera model and placed it on the second circle with a small rotation as well. And lastly, I added in my house model and placed it on the third circle and animated a little rotation as well. Now I was honestly going blind because of how much white was inside of my screen. So I changed all the circles color to red so that I can see them better. And then I duplicated the smaller cylinder and raised its position so it looks like the model is floating in that space between the three cylinders. Then I added in a white spotlight and made it pointing down at the model and duplicated it two more times for the other models as well. And finally, I added in a big parallel light to make sure that the scene is well lit. Now I went back and changed the circles color to white again and changed all the spotlights color to red, which gave us this really nice look. This feels like it's straight out of Blade Runner, like the scene when he was sat inside of the white room. Then I added in my camera and placed a point of interest in the center of the scene. Then I keyframed the position starting at this laptop here. And then I moved the camera over to the house over here. And finally moved the camera over to the camera over here. Huh? Then I smoothed out all the keyframes using the flow plugin and to make things even smoother, I clicked on the camera to reveal its path and using the pen tool, I added two points here and extended them until they formed a circle. Now I went back out of the pre-composition and added my vignette and fisheye warp effect and went back in and changed the background to a dark red one. And the final thing I wanted to do is add a few texts to reveal what I was talking about. So I added in the word freelancing and made it a 3D layer and placed it right in front of the model. Then I duplicated it and wrote out the word agency 
and duplicated it again and wrote out the word content. And I did notice that they were a bit dark, so I added in a point light and placed it in front of each text. And by this point, my PC was in tears. But after all this, this is what our second animation looks like from scratch. I've asked this question a lot, and 90% of the answers fall into these three categories. Some people want to focus on freelancing, while others love the agency model, and even others want to do content creation. This one is by far my favorite one. However, there's one more animation left that we'll need to complete. And this last one is a very quick one, but a very satisfying one. The first thing I'll do is add a null object with a transform effect and parent the pre-composition to it. Then I'll add keyframes for the position and scale and bring them up. Then make the video smaller and place it at the top. And I'll smoothen out the keyframes with the flow plugin. Then I'll add a white solid for the background and I'll add a shape layer and use my polygon tool to create a polygon and drop the number of corners to three so that it's a triangle. Then I'll add another shape layer and use my rectangle tool to create a thin line and I'll go down to the scale, unlink it and keyframe the horizontal scale animating in from zero. As for the triangle, I'll add a keyframe for the rotation and move it forward, then have it start at 180 and then add a keyframe for the opacity and move it forward and have it start at zero. There's a lot of keyframes that are being added right now. Then I'll duplicate this line layer, change the color to gray and decrease its size. And I'll put a bunch of these over the line. And now that we have the line animation complete, I'll use the gradient ramp effect on the background, turn it to a radial ramp and make the start gray and the end black. Then I'll make all of these shape layers white. And finally, I'll add a subtle deep glow to the triangle at an exposure of 0.2 and duplicate it to all of them. Now I'll bring in my textile that I created when we first started this project and I'll write out the real question is, then scale it down and add a letter pop down animation from Animation Composer. And with all that done, I pre-composed all of these animations together and animate them moving to the top. And for the last segment, I'll bring in my laptop 3D model and then I'll pre-compose it and set the render to an fast 3D. I'll give it a bit of rotation and keyframe its current position, then make it start off the screen to the left. Then I smoothen it out with the flow and this is what I get. So then I'll bring in my camera 3D model and also keyframe the position and do the same thing. And finally, I'll bring in my house 3D model and also keyframe the position and do the exact same thing. I'll add in my text style and write out the word freelancing, then set the gradient to a red one. I'll duplicate it, remove the fill and add a stroke to make the stroke thinner and also make the text bigger to get this effect. I'll then duplicate that text and place one at the top and one at the bottom. And then I'll do the same thing with the texts for the word content and then do the same thing with the texts for the word agency. Then I pre-compose the text and add a fisheye warp to make it look 3D. And finally, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a shape layer, draw out a line, make it a thin white line, then keyframe the horizontal scale expanding and smoothing it out, duplicate it and add a deep glow to both of them, randomize it with a little bit of rotation and the edit is officially complete. Yeah, after six hours of editing, my brain is fried to say the least. But this is what the final edit turned out to look like. And this is absolutely mind blowing. So check this out. I've got a very simple question for you. What do you want to do with video editing? I've asked this question a lot and 90% of the answers fall into these three categories. Some people want to focus on freelancing while others love the agency model and even others want to do content creation. But the real question is, which one fulfills you the most? Once you've answered that, then it's easy from there. If you guys have made it this far, I once again just wanna say thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really means the world to me. And if you're watching this, then just go ahead and comment down the word stone, cause why not? And with this being said, God bless all of you guys. I hope you enjoyed the Houston cold editing tutorial. And if you guys enjoyed this video, just let me know down below. And if you're down there, you might as well subscribe, am I right? And yeah, with this being said, we're now posting every single Saturday. So stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you guys then. But in the meantime, you can check out one of these two videos. It's totally up to you to choose one. My personal favorite is this one over here.